Welcome to Football in Vivo on Club Deportes. I am Eric McCoy, and I am joined by a man whose New Year's resolution is to say more nice things about Josh Wolf. It's David Alvarez. <laughs> yes, everything got to be positive about Mr. Wolf. Wow, you have really, oh, wow. really changed, David. Oh, my God. You've really changed from <laughs> 2021, you know, haven't you? We need to be positive about what we have. You know, you cannot be living in the past. Anyways. Okay, okay. Turn we'll we'll, see, we'll like see you after the first two or, two or three games. All right. <laughs> All right. I'm also joined by a man who is the world's most famous El Pasoan. It's That's Jorge right. Chavez. Ricardo who? Ricardo Pepe is my, is, is my, is, is almost my son because he, he grew up pretty much in the same place. So I, there's a kinship there. <laughs> okay, okay. All right. For those of you who don't know us, we are Football and Vivo, formerly of Co op Radio. Uh, but we want to go uncensored. We're tired of all the FCC rules and regulations, so we decided we'd go to YouTube, a place where you can really speak your mind. Um, so every Monday, we're going to be on clubdeportes.com on the Club Deportes YouTube channel, and we're going to be talking Austin FC. We're going to be talking Premier League, La Liga, Bundesliga, pretty much any Real Betis, uh, Leeds Betis, United, the Betis all of watch, the, yeah. about still Chile and uh, no, we're not going to talk about that. No, we're, we're not going to talk about that. No, we, uh, it's <laughs> no, a, it's no only a forty-minute show now. I mean, we can only, only cram so much into this show, so we got to prioritize. We got to got to prioritize. Colo Colo is playing Boca right now. Anyways, okay. Um, <laughs> I'm sure everyone's glued. Yeah, Boca, sure Boca's everyone. No one's watching Boca's us. They're all yeah. watching that. Yeah. All right, but how are you guys doing tonight? Feels good to be on YouTube, doesn't it? Well, it's exciting. Yeah, yeah. I mean, well, I think we were before, but um, it's so good to be here with Club Deportes. You know, I'm, I'm very excited about this this great opportunity for football and vivo. And um, let's talk about some football. Yeah, let's, let's start, start with uh, let's start with David's favorite subject. That's Austin FC. He's the number one fan of Austin FC. David yeah, Alvarez is. Verde. And Austin FC have been in <laughs> the news, making a lot of news of late. They have brought in Colombian midfielder Johan Valencia of uh, Deportivo Cali, the Colombian champions. He's 25 years old. He's more of a defensive midfielder. This is Austin FC sporting director Claudio Reyna's thoughts. On Valencia, he says his presence will add a new dimension to our midfield and free up some of our more attack-minded players to get forward and create chances. David, does this sound like the profile of midfielder that Austin FC needs? It sounds perfect to me. This, look at the guy is what five six, five seven, five six, five seven. Five, five, seven. Five, five, seven. seven. He's probably five, actually five. Gonna be a very very small midfielder. Yeah. Are you worried so, about that? Is that a concern? Yeah, it is a concern. Like nowadays, you know, people are pretty big. You know, like Pepe, what is that? Yeah. Six one? Six like one. all the new I players mean, the like world, are, world's best midfielder in Golo Conte. What's he? Six five, six six? Well, those are like the exceptions, you know. That's but yeah. I don't know. Andre we'll Siniesta, what this is he? This guy yeah. might be seven might be one, seven, might, might be the new Neymar, you know? You know, it's like Messi, you know, just voted for Neymar. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but um yeah, I mean, we'll see. We'll see, but I don't know. You know, th we need to see what else we got. You know, we got the new, the new kid from from the draft too. Uh, what was his name? Um, Kip Kip Keller. Yeah. So that's probably you know the more important role that needs to be filled in in the in, in the team. Right. Yeah, I actually think it is interesting going into this off season. I wouldn't have said midfield was the area that most needed addressing. However, uh, Tomas Pochettino, the uh, somewhat enigmatic Tomas Pochettino, uh, was loaned to River Plate. Is that failing up, would you say? How, how does Tom, T Tomas Pochettino end up at River Plate? Struggles on one of the worst teams in MLS and then finds himself on one of the best teams in Argentina. How well, does that work? Well, it, it works because he is from Argentina. He, you know, he came from the Boca Juniors. You know, he played one game for Boca, Boca Juniors and then he moved to in Talleres, I believe it was. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, um, I think, yeah. So he got some history there in the club class before he played from with Austin. So that's what people remember about Pochettino because if, you, if they – bothered to watch the Austin FC games, it would never hire that guy. No. It's uh, like, it was awful. Uh, like, it was like so bad. Yeah. The only, the only thing he did was probably two goals in one game, right? That was, I believe, yeah. That's he was, it. He was like, Jorge, can you shed some match. light on this? What, what is, what is going on? How is Tomas Pochettino moving it's, to, to River Plate it's, after it's, that, that season he just had with yeah, Austin FC? Honestly, it's very, very strange because uh, a lot of people, I guess the fan base in Austin FC was very divided 
about giving him a chance or about, you know, he didn't show anything this season and et cetera. But just following the new, the you Twitter. Think perhaps it was not necessarily Tomas Pochettino himself being the problem, but perhaps the coaching, let's say, that he, he received. I, I, well, that's what I we're going to say. I think, I think, I think the, the, they talk the, about it. The, the relationship was lacking there. They, they, they didn't yeah. really gel. And so, well, but what I found interesting is that, you know, like we just discussed right now, he really didn't show anything this season. So, you know, you'd think that if they, if the, if the fans saw what what they saw, they wouldn't be thrilled. But it's quite the opposite. Twitter, yeah, Twitter fans show, are yeah, totally right. excited about having Pochettino. River Plate fans, and let's be honest, River Plate fans, they're very knowledgeable. Well, so I thought it was very well, interesting. They, they didn't watch many of this game, probably. I mean, they just. I, I'm sure they watched. I mean, everything before come on, that. This guy was so poor. Yeah. So, he so, is so like, I, I thought he that didn't was interesting. Played with both legs, you know. He didn't. Do you think that part of the issue was though is that I mean I think in Argentina he was more of a defensive midfielder, more of a number six. He didn't really play too often in that position with Austin FC. Do you think it was? More of an issue of him just not having a settled spot in Austin FC starting a Yeah, I mean, yeah, that was the people saying yeah. about that, that he didn't play his favorite position. I mean, okay, gotcha. But still, when you are the in whatever the designated player, come on. Yeah. Like, and you know, it was so strange because of the, the f- first few games, you know, it was okay. You know, they did the free kick in the, the in, in the preview, in the pre-games, you know, people went Start crazy. Off well. I don't know, very well. Yeah, so people went crazy, and, and people, like, kids were like, well, who's your favorite player? They would say Pochettino. Say Pochettino. Yeah. They say Pochettino. Is a... Okay. Well, but at, but, but at, this at, kid, so it's all the, you know, the propaganda, the paraphernalia, yeah. they have it. I mean, Pochettino's supposed to be, and he wasn't, you know, it was yeah. a flop. It was yeah. the biggest flop. I, I think maybe. And one of the biggest flops we have. What I honestly think is that I think Pochettino underestimated the physicality of what MLS is, because... I remember uh, when one of the first interviews he had, he was asked, you know, what differences do you see between the coaching in MLS and the coaching that he, that he had mm. previously? And he said that they're more concentrated on your position in Argentina, where here they kind of expect you to do a little bit of everything. So I think he just wasn't used to that kind of coaching, and that's probably why he, why he didn't gel with, with the coaching Well, staff. I think one of the issues, I, I believe, after one of the matches, Wolf was, was unhappy because he felt Pochettino just kind of marched to the beat of his own drum, yeah. not following his instructions and just kind of did what he, he wanted to do out there. Right. So, yeah, that, that is interesting. But I would like to go ahead and circle back, though, to uh, Valencia. Because I think this yeah. is a really, really interesting, really actually pretty exciting signing. I think it's, it's fair to say. So, yeah. Valencia... Uh, comes to Austin FC via Deportivo Cali, again, the Colombian champion. So um, last season, Valencia started 33 of 38 matches uh, for Deportivo Cali. Um, they primarily play like a 4-2-3-1 formation, and Valencia was one of the two central midfielders in that formation. So number six, kind of the area that we typically yeah. see Alex Ring operating in. And he put up some impressive numbers. So he recorded 55 tackles, which is actually second highest in the Colombian first division. And uh, 60 interceptions as well, which was 10th in the Colombian First Division. Um, I, I guess the question that I have, and, and I'll address this to you, Jorge. Mm-hmm. Um, do you think, because it, it looks like, yeah, absolutely, based on his stats, based on his positioning with Deportivo Cali, profiles is like your classic number six. Do you right. think this will allow Alex Ring to get higher up the pitch and join Austin FC's attack more? Yes, absolutely. Uh, um, especially with the news that Alex Ring was named DP. And he expressed uh, a desire to be more offensive. He didn't really do that when NYCFC. He was more of a, of, of a defensive midfielder, but he shows he showed he, he can score goals. We he's saw got a, a few shot, occasions. He's got a shot on him. A few occasions last yeah. season where he, he did get a little higher right. up. But David, is this something that you want to see? Do you want to see Alex Ring contributing more in the attacking third as opposed to central midfielder? We, well, we've so typically what, seen do that. we have do we have a four three three formation? I, okay, so that's the other question. I think I we're think probably going to see more of a four two three one, right? And that that's kind of what was settled yeah. on as because okay, Sebastian Driuzzi. I mean, he's just a classic number ten, yeah. and I think his involvement in the team. I think to be, I think he is Austin FC clearly the, the most talented player on the team by far, and yes. I think he is just your classic number yeah. ten. Yeah. And I think you have to build the team around your best player, and so if you have a ten, that that kind of puts you in more of a four two three one as opposed to a four three three, which doesn't really accommodate. A number ten. So, right. Are, are you cool with that, David? Are you I'm, cool I'm, with that? And, 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 and you know, I'm not gonna 
be any control. I mean, I think those are options. They're new options, and I'm 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 happy with it. You know, because you need to build. You need to build the the, the columna vertebral. We say you know, yeah. like a spine, and right. you have a goalie. We're gonna have a new uh, defender that's not gonna be what we had, and then yeah, I think you're, you're building the center. I think that, that's a good. That's a good idea. Yeah. Um, I mean, but, you know, the tactics, I don't know. We need to see them play first, but, you know, I'm still very skeptical. Still very skeptical. So the way I see it, we're going to have Driuzzi in that 10 spot, and then you're going to have Alex Ring and, and Valencia behind Driuzzi. And I, I see and Ring. Then, and, and when you're going to put Cecilio? Well, Cecilio will be on the left wing, uh -huh. presumably, and then you have Cecilio. either uh, Diego Fagundes or uh, perhaps Ethan Finley. Now you, you could have him play on, uh -huh. on the right as well. So there, there's a few options there. Um, in regards to the midfield, do you feel like this is an area that is now – are you satisfied with how that midfield's looking right now with, with all of the, these players? We have Riuzzi, we've got Ring, Valencia, uh, Danny Pereira, of course, is, is still an option. He's coming off of yeah, I mean, <laughs> apparently not a season that impressed Davi, but I think impressed, impressed quite today, a few other people. Yeah, I mean, um, honestly. I mean, are you okay with this midfield going forward? Or do you I mean, think more work I'm needs okay. to be done? It's definitely it's more work to be done. I mean – but, in midfield, there's more work. But to you be know, done. when we talk about the speculation, we're speculating about these players, and yeah, it's, it's looking better. I, I don't it know if I agree better. with David here. I, I think this midfield looks pretty good, Jorge. How, how do you stand on it? I, I, I feel what what the real need is for a central defender. Uh, Absolutely, that that's. I, I know. That, I know that they got got this new kid from in the draft, and he, he looks the part. I mean, he, some some people describe him as a. As a Zimmerman light, and Zimmerman is that is Walker awesome. Zimmerman. That is really, is really good to hear. Of the yeah. USMNT. He's six four, six three, something like that. He's a converted midfielder, so he play, played midfielder in in high school, and then when we when he got to college, they switched him over for over to central defender. So he's got he's got the dribbling ability. And he's just got the size and the height. So I think that's going to be... That's very important. Very yeah. important. Is this a player, do you think, Jorge, that yeah. is going to be expected to contribute immediately to Austin FC? Kind of in the way, I mean, Danny Pereira was Austin yeah. FC's first pick in, in last season's Super right. Draft. Do you see Kip Keller in that type of mold? Maybe not a locked-in starter, but someone who's going to contribute uh, a significant number of minutes this season? Yes, because I, I, I saw a lot of the... Uh, read a lot of articles prior to that, and they had him as the not only the best central defender but the best player overall in all of the draft. So the fact that he fell to fifth place to Austin FC, they must have been beside themselves that they couldn't believe that basically the best player on the draft fell to them. So I, I, uh, so I do definitely expect him to contribute pretty much immediately. Uh, maybe not starter. Uh, I still need to experience. I mean, I know he's, he's played a lot of, a lot of college, and, and that's fine. But, you know, MLS is different, and the defenders are faster. I mean, the, the, the strikers are faster, midfielders are faster, so he's going to have to adjust to that. But I, I, I feel pretty good about him. But at the same time, uh, that's still a need that needs to be addressed. You know, Claudio Reyna himself said it, that there's, some, there's still some options that, that, that they're looking at. Uh, there's still, I think, a couple of roster spots that are still open. So we'll, we'll see, we'll see what, uh, what they can come up with, but yeah. I feel, I feel good about the midfielders. Yeah, absolutely. Davi, I got a trivia question for you. Kip Keller comes from St. Louis University. The Billikens. What is a Billiken? Billiken. You know what a Billiken is? No tengo idea. I have no idea what a Billiken is. Billy? Can. Oh, some sort of bird? It's, a, uh, it's kind of like a mythical, mythical creature. It's, oh, it's, a mythical it's not creature. a peli Billiken. No, That's it, it is not a Billiken. Okay, no, no, no idea. Yeah. Okay, yeah, so, a little trivia question for you. Okay, so Kip Keller. Um, yeah, I, I absolutely think that he is someone, like, like I alluded to, like um, uh, Danny Pereira last season, is someone who, yeah, may not be a, a locked-in starter, but is someone that can be expected to contribute minutes. Uh, Claudio Reyna said he's aggressive, he likes to step to the ball, and he's good, has a good recovery speed. So that speaks to kind of, like you said, came up as a midfielder. Right. So I think so, we can expect kind of a midfielder-esque skill set. So that would be like a Romagna. Yeah. And, later, and that was when Romagna sometimes plays it as a midfielder, you know. Yeah, because he, he's the got the, the pace for it. And I think what's going to end up happening is that eventually, I think Cascante is going to have to going to be the one that loses out on all this. Uh, exactly. He's going to be Cascante Romagna. He just doesn't have the speed. I mean, I'm sure Man. nothing nothing wrong with that. It's just 
doesn't have the speed to oh my like, catch up speed. He, he, yeah, he, he it was he was constantly beaten by uh, by the faster uh, part of the four worst. That but I think that, that is faced, so critical so. in this Austin FC team, a team that yes. has as much possession as Austin FC has. You need pace at center back because you're going to be doing a lot of. You know, you're in the opposition's yeah. half. The opposition wins the ball. You got to run back to try and defend those counterattacks. And if you don't have pace at center back, yeah, that's a huge issue. But for me, you know, besides all the all the all the hirings that we're gonna have it with Austin FC, you know, it's it's just it's the team, the coaching has to change. You know, has to change set pieces. Where yeah. are the set pieces? Yeah, they they, they there's need no set pieces. Yeah, like. I, I, and, and David, your New Year's resolution was to say nice things about Josh Wolf, <laughs> and here we are in our <laughs> first show on Club Deportes, and I we're mean, talking we, about the I'm defense. Like, we're talking about defending counterattacks, and no for some reason, the, you're talking the coaching it, of set pieces. It, it, set pieces, and, and and just like uh, the warm ups before the games. It's like you compare when you when Seattle did the warm ups. See, this is some, and, I, I imagine it's not too and many shows did the warm ups. On YouTube, like they are breaking down the warm-ups yeah. for teams <laughs> I mean, in MLS. So you're the only here on Football and FIFA. It is, Do you get that? I want to pay positive. attention to everything. <laughs> just think back. Just learn from what you didn't do yeah. last year, you know, and then we can okay, implement so I, it this year. I think we can all agree that, yes, yeah, center back is absolutely an area that needs addressing. Jorge and I are both happy with the midfield going forward. That leaves the attack. I want to talk about... Austin FC's forward. So there's been a couple of additions this offseason. Max Arruti joins from the Houston Dynamo. He had uh, seven goals across 30 matches with Houston last season. And then uh, Ethan Finley as well joined from Minnesota United. And just three goals across 30 matches for uh, Minnesota United. So those are the additions there. We also are going to get a full season of Sebastian uh, Druzy and yeah. Moussa Jite. Is If Austin FC don't add any more attackers... Do, do the attackers they have, are they good enough to lead this team in 2022? I'll start with you, Doug. Yeah, they, they are. I mean, Drew's is great. Um, I think he's, he's, he's just getting better and better. And if he has better company... Um, because this team know. did not score many goals last season. And that's okay. It is okay. But, you know... The, a lot of possession, not a lot of goals. But, again, same thing when I talk, we're talking about, you know, hey, we're talking about all these forwards... What position they do? When do they when do they attack? I mean, that's what we need to see from 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 them. You know, I don't know. We need to see them play. I don't know. It just we can speculate again, but I don't know. I think we have a strong forwards. If we put those guys in a four three three from formation, yes. Uh, yes strong, I, in I think, is a strong word, David. I, I don't know if I'd call that a strong yeah. collection of. If forwards. I do a four three three, it would work better with those three forwards. I think we, that's true. I I disagree. I think Driussi, he's a 10. And I think if you put him on the wing, I think that limits his effectiveness because he's not going to get on the ball as much as he's on the wing. And I think if you put him in, you know, one of the number eight attacking midfield roles in a 4-3-3, I think it that's going to put nine. too much. False nine. Uh, false nine. Well, false see, nine. I, I think we saw a, a bit of, uh, of him kind of moving up into that position. And I, yeah. I just don't think it suits him well. I think he needs another striker up top to kind of play off of. Well, yeah. And get the best out of his, his, frankly, very good passing skills. Jorge, are you satisfied with Austin FC's attack going into next season if no one else gets added? I, I think so. Um, uh, I, you know, uh, yeah, I think the addition of Driussi is going to be a little bit underrated. I think he's, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, uh, Maxi Uruti. I think he's a little bit of underrated. I actually he, think he's so, gonna, too, yeah. He's, I mean, seven he, goals for a horrid Houston Dynamo. So, he he would have been, he would have been tied for the lead in Austin FC last year. That's so you know adding that much production. I think it's just gonna he's gonna provide a little bit of leadership to the rest of the group. Uh, the the rest of the uh, especially Gita, I think uh, he's gonna benefit from being next to a guy like that. And Ethan Finley to me was just more of a like a fill in role, uh, like a break here in case of emergency type guy. Yeah, uh, not. Very exciting, but I could be wrong. He could be end up being MVP. He, he, I mean, he has been with a national team before, so yeah, he's and got the, he's got good qualities. And the other thing too, he can play on the right wing, which right. could move then Diego Fugundes back into a, a midfield position, which right. is kind of more his natural area. And then yeah. you could have more of an attacking threat coming forward from midfield, which gives the opposition defenses you know something to think about because obviously he didn't have a ton of dynamism. Coming from midfield yeah. and assisting their attack. So uh, I think Uruti, like I said, he, he offers a little bit more flexibility in that. 
positioning because he can he can just switch from forward to midfield without a problem, and then fa- switch switch Fagundes, you know, vice versa. So I think that'll provide a little bit of a, a something to for the defense. Of teams, do you agree with this, that. David? You, you seem to be. I mean, it just I want to. I just I really want the season to start, and I just yeah, uh, I did this. I just, I, I, yeah. Let's let's call the team, I mean, let's put the team together, right? And then send send Wolf, you know, a message. This is the team you're gonna. Well, play, it's actually right? you don't have to wait long, <laughs> David, because there actually is going to be a, uh, yeah. a friendly yeah. coming up February 16th against Atlas, Atlas, You're defending Liga MX champion. You excited? Yes. Excited, excited. I, I mean, am excited. I mean, Atlas won after so many years that day, the day they won, and how they won it, uh, just was very it, special. Yeah, pretty special. Very stuff, special. Yeah, and we, we have, yeah. I met actually some people from Atlas at the same time, and they, oh, they were yeah. telling me all the stories about Atlas. Hey, you want to be in the radio? He was like, I can be in the radio and tell you about Atlas, you know? Yeah. Like, yeah. Next yeah. time you're in town. Yeah, the, uh, it, it's exciting. It, I, yeah. I mean, uh, the, the 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 quality of the teams that that the front office has been able to attract. First, it yeah, was Tigres. Tigres, yeah, and now Atlas. Uh, it it just makes sense, which is odd because I, I you would think that like Houston would have already had these types of friendlies all the time, and no. they didn't. I mean, no, I mean it's, it's very odd. So yeah. uh, you know, kudos to the front office to being able to attract this because you know who's next, David. Santiago Wanderers. It's got to be. Oh, it's got to be. Imagine that. Hey, after, Wouldn't that be something? <laughs> after, huh? after we go f- first division, we need, we need to win the second division now, man. We're in the B. You might not be able Jesus. to last the full 90 minutes without being thrown out Yeah, like U2 the last, Stadium like, like if the Santiago last Wanderers <laughs> come here to play a friendly. I, I don't no, think yeah, you can last that. the full 90. I mean, it would be a green dream. Right, red it would be a green, true. green. Red so everybody's party. green. Yeah, everybody's uh, green. Yeah, and the two very not very successful teams uh, playing. That would be nice. Yeah, uh, a little bit more even competition. Yeah, at, at least. Hey, actually, the new uh, the new uh, coach for, for for Wonders it is uh, Bayneta, which was the coach that won the two thousand and one. Champion, Chilean championship. Oh. Okay, so for those of you Good. who did not follow us on Co-op Radio, one thing you're going to have to endure <laughs> on Co-op Vivo is Santiago Wanderers talk from our, our resident Chilean, David <laughs> Alvarez. So you just got to put up with it. Yeah. We let him talk for a minute or two about Santiago, Santiago Wanderers. Hey. And, and, and then con, I shut and, him up and we move on. And so con that, ball and works. all that kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah, calm so the ball. Yeah, 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 we got to talk about all that stuff. Yeah, so we told just, about... Just bear with us. It'll, yeah. be over. It'll be over quickly, I, I, I promise. <laughs> the I Copa promise. America <laughs> champions, yeah, 2015, 16. Okay, all right. Zero, yeah, all of that stuff, you know. Yeah, we hear about that once a month. We hear the, the oh, siete, siete Zero. Oh, Siete Zero. zero. Yeah, zero. That's a, that was a fun game. Yeah, I think right, once I, a month. I, I personally But that was that my, actually, my team won 7 0 over McCallum last week. So. Oh, congratulations. <laughs> nice little <laughs> tribute. Nice little yeah, tribute. Yeah, and then we beat Eastside, too, uh, two days ago. So. Oh, and we're on a roll there. We're in a row. Yeah. yeah. For those unaware, you're listening to the opinions of a coach, Coach Alvarez, if you can see. On the uh, on the shirt right oh, there. So. I'm sorry. Yeah, His yeah. opinions come with some authority. There it is, uh, Coach Alvarez. <laughs> Love it. Looks looks great. So, yeah, yeah, this guy yeah. knows what he's talking about. He knows no, what no, he's no, talking about. No, no, about. I don't. I'm just learning. I'm. Uh, you know, you always learning about every day. You, you you learn about football. Yeah, you never stop learning. You never stop never learning. Never stop so learning. Absolutely. You make true. errors. You know, you, 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 you so many prejudices. Sometimes you know you need to open up to to new things. You know. Something, something you think you know, but you don't know, right? Yeah. So, um, this is a good place to be, guys, here with you. Uh, so, we're going to be in the middle of the season, right? We're going to be in the middle of the of the soccer, of the high school season right now. Yeah. So, start the official games will start next week, uh, the 27th, right? Right. The same day of the uh, uh, qualifiers for, for Qatar. Mm-hmm. So, we're going to have a, a very, very, very busy season. Very busy season, S- yeah. Marzo. Well, I watch zero Austin high school soccer, so that's going to be David just doing like a, a monologue yeah. whenever it comes to the yeah, Austin even the girls, high school soccer. You know, I've been following girls soccer too. You know that, so it, it is very competitive. Right, and that that's what I was going to mention. That and one know, of the kids actually from the Austin FC Academy. Yes, he's, he's have uh, news about him. Right? Yeah, Mike Micah Burton was invited to the under seventeen um, U.S. Men's. Uh, um, camp, camp. Um, yeah, he was invited week, to a camp. Think. Exciting, and and you know it's it's exciting. You know, having like like David Alvarez here because he'll get to he gets to see a lot of the youth 
you know, the high I see a lot. There's a yeah, lot of yeah. talent. We, we have a lot of There's talent. There's a lot of talent. Town. It's just and so much talent. Yeah, yeah. so Austin FC has, has very good pickings uh, available uh, yeah. for them. For their academy, so yeah, it they, well. no, definitely, and 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 I've seen them. And we have we just played Coronado to last week in a tournament uh, to Coronado from El Paso, yeah. which is a very good play, played state team, championship team there, yeah. And a couple of the players actually went play for Bravo, is it, practice with Bravo, and one of the other players with uh, Leon, I believe. Right. So two of those oh, players, wow. those kids, are already you know and in in yep. playing with the big teams, not not in the first division, but you know in their academy, in their, yeah, in their academy. So that's. That says a lot, you know. Yeah, you know, you know Coronado is yeah, pretty Coronado, famous. yeah, it's a, it's a pretty big powerhouse. So for yeah, so yeah, there. they beat us four zero. But let's forget about that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We, are, we are blessed to yeah. have yeah, David we, Alvarez yeah. here in all of his just limitless knowledge <laughs> of Texas high school soccer. It is a yeah. wonderful thing. Okay, so you want to see Santiago Wanderers come play Austin FC at Q two? Yeah, I would love to see Chelsea Football Club. Oh, Chelsea come would to be a Q2 Chelsea. to take on Austin FC. That, so would, be, that would be awesome. That, that is called a segue I mean, there, Duffy. Chelsea. Yeah, that's, 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 that is me that's, thinking uh, of a way to transition us yeah. from Austin FC to top Premier League and talk Great specifically transition. I love it. Manchester City versus Chelsea. Manchester City 1-0 winners thanks to a brilliant Kevin De Bruyne, Kevin De Bruyne. strike at City's 12th straight win. So City are now 13 points clear of, of third place Chelsea. And 11 points clear of second place Liverpool. The title race is over in the Premier League, right, David? We, we, we say that on, I mean, in, in football in vivo last year. Uh, yeah, it's been over for a while. Yeah, it's been it, two weeks. For a while. it was two weeks ago. Yeah. We said that, you know, it was over. Yeah. It's over. Yeah. And, it, and it's getting like, bigger and bigger. Like, do you have a chance maybe Liverpool has two games at hand that they have not played? They have one, one match in hand right now. Yeah, oh, what well, I thought about too. Well, yeah, and it's still, not, it's, it's not going to be enough. Yeah, it's, it's not going to be enough. Point. And the way the way Manchester City is playing, it's just, uh, yeah. They're, they're right, tell me there's still some hope. Tell me there is still some hope for my beloved I Chelsea can't, FC. I can't. Ah. <laughs> I can't say it. No, uh, I had picked Chelsea to be win the EPL. And, I don't even remember who I it's not, it's not. Do you know happen. who you pick? Did you say yeah, it, yeah. He says it's not gonna. Well, happen. you say Chelsea because and City. And oh, I, I just started and, naming and teams. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. We talk about it. We talk about it. <laughs> and I the, say City. And the reason why, you know, of, I course, of course, of course, of course, Alvarez. And the reason I picked Chelsea was because Chelsea had just signed Romelu Lukaku. That's Needless okay. to say, he, it's been really disappointing. Okay, so I got a question yeah. for you, Jorge. So yeah. Lukaku, after this match against City. He faced significant criticism and criticism from his own manager, from his own manager. for his yeah. performance. So he actually, a stat that I found quite telling, uh, he had seven aerial duels that he contested in this match against City, lost all seven of them. Yeah, you, you, keep, you that's not a good stat. It is not a that good is, stat. That Lukaku is not a, good not a no. he is sometimes, I think, uh, stereotyped as like a big target man kind of striker just because he, he's a big dude, yeah, Lukaku. But tall, really, he, yeah. he has a history of not performing well, in aerial duels, that is not an area for which he, he excels. Right. Um, so the question I have concerning um, Lukaku, um, is, are his struggles down to, like, are they his own fault? Or are they down to the, the tactical approach that, that Tuchel is taking <clears throat> with him? I, I think it's something similar to what happened with, uh, um, with Pochettino and Wolf. They're just not gelling. And, and don't, think, don't say that, Ori. I don't, I, think, I don't like the sound of that. I, I know think, how that story ended. I, 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 I don't know. want Lukaku going to River Plate. But, but, <laughs> but, 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 but it's, been, it's been a series of things with, with yeah, Lukaku. Okay, okay. There was that interview with, with the Italian media that he missed the, guy, the yeah. Italian league. That, that, that was he didn't not ask a good permission interview. from the team to, to, be, to say that. You just don't do that. That's undermining your teammates and your team that you're currently with by saying, oh, I missed the league that I was with I missed before. the Tifosi. You 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 don't do that, and, and so that. Uh, David, what do you, what do you think of that? Was that not that was not a good interview for Lukaku? He, oh, he it, shouldn't have said. Uh, that. But he should not have said it. But you know, he should not be allowed to do it. I mean, if, I, if this guy, if, right? I mean, Technically, he wasn't allowed to do it. I think yeah, he, went, yeah, around yeah, he went, went around club, the, the, club the, rules. The that's, yeah. well, that's 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 an issue. That's that's the big issue. And then the fact that he say that he's not that happy with. With the coach. What yeah. would you do, David, if one of your players spoke to the Austin American Statesman and said, you know what, I'm not happy with the tactics from Coach Alvarez. I just don't. He's not playing to my strengths. I don't know what is going on. Well, well, what would your response be? I, I would put it on the bench, you know. 
for a couple of days, you know. But if it's really good, I don't know. If it's very important, depends on the quality. If it's really good, yeah. soon, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe I'm gonna punish it for five minutes. Sure. <laughs> no, but you know, it, it, it is disrespectful. But nah, it's disrespectful at Kepa when when Kepa, you know, did not want to get out of the field in the old days. Remember, I, when I say Kepa, is the only thing I remember is when. He disrespected uh, Sarri. I seem to remember oh, a lot yeah. of the goalkeeper. Yeah. That's, that's, the the goalkeeper. Goalkeeper. that's to give that's up right. a few yeah. more goals. Yeah, for Caballero, you know, when he was yeah. take the penalty. So that reminds me a little bit of that, but that was worse. I think this this is this can this Lukaku is, can get it better, I think. Okay, so here's I the think thing. Lukaku yeah. can I actually think that Chelsea yeah. in this match against City were actually trying on many occasions to play to Lukaku's strength. They were hitting through balls to him where, where Lukaku was running in between. The city center back. Zayek just misplayed so many of those passes well, yeah. in this match. And Pulisic, I think, I think he did not have a good no, match. He, he held on to the ball game. for too long. We're dribbling it in trouble. A, so I think the I runs were there, yeah. and and the the passes were there to be hit. But Chelsea just they, didn't they were connect. Just, they, weren't, they weren't connected. To me, yeah. it was more of an issue on execution as opposed to tactics. Uh, yeah, and, and not, yeah, exactly. And it was not Lukaku's fault. I don't think. I mean, even he can have a bad day, not scoring goals. So it's okay. He had one really good chance. You, one he, chance that, but he was a great save. Yeah, well, it was, it was a great, great safe. I mean, the guy, he just stopped it right there. Yeah. Like, Ederson, like, that's amazing, beautiful save. But other than that, uh, no, he didn't have much. But but City did have more chance, way more than many chances. Oh, yeah. yeah they had more Chelsea possession, did. yeah. So that's what you need to think about it, that, you know, the goal that uh, De Bruyne scored was just a gorgeous goal because nobody expected him. To do that, like the goalie Kepa knew that he wasn't, he was too close to the ball. Does Mindy make that too save? close to the ball uh, to hit it with such his power? Like he puts so much power with no much. Sp- Usually, you need to go all the way up, you know, with your with your leg. But he would no, just he, like he, right he, next he to, the right there to the ball, and yeah. he hit it so beautiful. Does Mindy make that save? What's that? Does Mindy make that save if, if he's in goal instead of Kepa? Does he make the save? No. No, he put it right on the corner. I'll tell you, the number of just worldy goals that Chelsea concede whenever Kepa is in goal versus when Mindy is in goal. Yeah, it's a significant. But but it was a big deal. Like he put he put it with power right on the corner. And he go if you watch though, he actually goes the wrong way initially, and then so he gets off the bat. And I I think a better keeper, I think. Probably. Perhaps doesn't do that. Yeah, probably. Perhaps doesn't probably, jump but, in the opposite direction. But of the shot. he did what everybody was suspecting. He did, did nobody expect De Bruyne to do that. Yeah, he not did, then. He Maybe he a little bit later. Goals gonna, like that against Chelsea, was gonna, so they, was, they should have been expecting. But him to no, do that. but it just technically was beautiful. Technically, you had to understand how beautiful it was because he was not far. It was close to the ball. Yeah, so hard. Nobody is gonna shoot it. Yeah, he's, he's gonna always gonna cross placement and place it or wait, no, wait a little incredible. bit so yeah. it's clo- yeah, lo- farther from the ball to hit it up with that power. Right. It's like he hit it with his top almost yeah, because he, he wins so much. He got so much power. So no, yeah, was, Nakepa, no, nobody could have stopped that. Guy. I I think I think Mendy stopped. Mm-hmm. Okay, so here's here's what I want to ask. I want to I want to shift the conversation to Manchester City here. Mm-hmm. Uh, Manchester City, if they go on to win this Premier League title, as we all three here yeah. expect them to do. That would be their fourth Premier League title in five seasons. Mm-hmm. They have, however, yet to win the Champions League. And, of course, Pep Guardiola has yet to win the Champions League since leaving Barcelona. Barcelona. So, if they win the Premier League but fail once again in the Champions League, can they still consider this season a success? I'll ask you first, David. So, so yeah, of course it's a success for, for City. Yes. Huge success. So even if they lose quarterfinals to the Champions League, they still say wonderful season. Well, it just, I mean, yeah, no, no. I mean, it, everybody knows that Guardiola wants to win every the Champions League. Everybody knows. So they're gonna. I mean, they're gonna do their best. I mean, I, I, I'm, it's gonna be entertaining. That's an important thing about football. Just have fun with it. You know. So do yeah, you it's find important. do you find that, that this city team is entertaining? Has their success not become perhaps a little? Boring in the Premier League. We were because we were talking get, about because a four so team at the start of the season, a uh, four team title uh, race, yes, get, and here they are running away with it again. Yeah, but you see how he planned the game. Like he doesn't have the same players all the time. Like he he changes around. He put Diaz in the right in the middle this time, and Foden in top, and then he put always Jesus and, and on the bench, and then Jesus comes in, and Gundogan also wasn't. So he mixed it up pretty good. 
and he knows how to do it. And and all the everybody knows what to do. Everybody play hundred percent. They know their role. They yeah. always get the ball back. Yeah. They get the ball. They, you need, they get the ball back. Yeah. Right. And they control the game. Do you find this Manchester City team entertaining? I do in the Champions League. Um, I, so the I, Premier I League success to, is starting to get a bit stale for you. It, it is. To, to me, it is. But that, that's why I, I, they need I'm a super more excited league. about... Ah, I didn't whoa. say that. That's <laughs> classic. Bring it. Bring it. Oh, what did I say? Bring it. Bring it. Bring it. No, I'm in the... Hey, can I... Uh, 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 wow, I could just see the Jesus. comments. Yeah. Yeah. Don't, don't read the well, comments. Well, it's just an idea. No, no, no. Just an idea. It's an idea. You came up with it on the spot. A super league. Just come up with it. A super league proponent. Unbelievable. Wow. Anyway, getting back to reality. I think a Manchester... And you touched on it... Uh, David, right now, they, all the players know their roles, and Pep Guardiola has no problem switching players because of that versatility that he's got in his in his roster. He is he can put a better team in Champions League t- the tournament as well as in Premier. So there's no reason why he, they can't win both. So I I expect him to to have a little more, bit more versatility of the better players to be available for Champions League games now. That pretty much, I mean, 13 points, I mean, unless there's a disaster of, of ethical proportions, then there, there'll, there'll be a dogfight there. But I expect, I expect Pep Guardiola, he seems like the type of person that that's, tends to be obsessive about some things. Tends to, yeah. And, and so the fact that he has not won Champions League, it's going to eat no, at him it, it, oh, I'm, year I'm after sure. year after I, year I, until, he, until he checks Whoa. that box off. So here's so the, here's I what I'll ask you, David. So your your son, much to your dismay, mm-hmm. is a Manchester City mm-hmm. fan, correct? Mm-hmm. Yes, okay, correct. Okay, so if Manchester that's my City, dismay. <laughs> <laughs> but you want him to be a Barca fan, correct? Well, yeah, well, I mean, you can be both. I mean, they can both. Yeah, and, and, I I don't know if I like. It. I think you get one club, and that's no. you get one, at least per continent. No, I have one, club one per in continent. Chile, one in one. Okay, one club per continent. Okay, but per, yeah, there you go. Per continent. Per continent. <laughs> per, per continent. <laughs> one club for for Ireland. <laughs> okay, so would he be satisfied with a season that concludes with City winning the Premier League but not the Champions League? Would he be satisfied as a City fan? Would he say, no. great season? No. He, won. he, oh, wants, course, the, yeah, he yeah. wants the Champions League. Of course. He wants, he wants yeah, both. Yeah, I imagine. Yeah, he yeah. was. I, I imagine and, and, that. And he is, does also, you know, he, he does follow uh, Barca too. So, and PSG. Yeah. And you know. Real Madrid. And no, 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 no. One team per league. One team per league. Okay, per league is real. But there's this thing called the Champions League. Inter, team, that, Inter, that becomes Inter a conflict is, of Inter interest. Inter is, is, is the calcium, no? Right. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, you need to win everything. Okay, so we, I think we are getting close to being out of time here, but I want to make sure we get to one of our favorite segments on co-op was the Real Betis update, where we check in on the exploits of... Manuel Pellegrini, Chilean Manuel Pellegrini and his Real Betis team. Former Manchester City. Premier League winner with Manchester City. Winner and, you know, De Bruyne played with. uh, Uh, Absolutely. So, but the Real Betis update, our first edition here on Club Deportes, well, it has taken a dark turn because during Saturday's match uh, against Sevilla, the frying pan of Spain, one of the most intense rivalries in all of Spanish football. They were playing a, a... a Copa del Rey match, and during this match, a pole, I think is what you would describe it as. A flagpole. A a, a, a piece of a a flagpole. A A piece of a flagpole, yeah, was thrown onto the field from the crowd, and it hit uh, Joan Jordan on the head, Sevilla player Joan Jordan on the head, and that... Did did he? Did you you see a picture of his head? No, it it, it hit him flat. Instead of, like, like, spearing him, it hit him flat, which... If you're going to hit by a pole, that's probably the best If you're going to get hit by a hit. pole, it's a okay. great way to start. Yeah, he did get hit in the head. Yeah. So you, you, oh, you said... There was no... What the, kind of damage was in there? I, I just, I'm well, curious. he was back in training today. He had to go to, he had to, go yeah. to the hospital for monitoring, but he was back in training as of today, Monday. So, so he didn't get a concussion, did he? I he, do not He was placed so. under in concussion protocols like 15 minutes <laughs> later after he was hit. So... You know, I mentioned it to you in the What's Up conversation that the Spanish commentators were livid with the fan that threw the pole, but also 
with the unsportsmanlike conduct of the of the uh, of the player of the player and at the bench because after all that time he he gestured towards this, the crowd and all that kind of stuff and then all of a sudden he, his head hurt wow. and he s- sits down on the pitch so so you know yeah, that, that reminds looked, me of the you know look bad it, it, you know have you ever heard about the maracanazo you know but that, that they in the old days in the nineties early nineties Chile was trying to qualify for. Um, the World Cup and yeah, story, yeah. playing with Crazy Brazil story. at right. Maracanã Stadium, yeah. and one of the the fogueteira, one of the ladies from Maracanã Stadium, and the Chileans were expecting that, yeah. like because it, Maracanã at that time yeah. was bigger. Yeah, it was, it had hundred and fifty thousand people. Uh, not like now, it's like eighty thousand, but but just it was it was huge, and it was a big qualifying game, and the Chilean player. Got hit by one of those fireworks, one of those rockets. Uh-huh. But after further review, the Bengala, which was yeah, the, 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 the Bengala, fire. hit the somebody took a video and picture and it hit the, the floor. Yeah, it didn't and hit him. I remember that. When he hit the floor, but then he got a little knife and he cut himself. The the Chilean Ooh. goalie Condor Rojas, which was one of the best goalies of the world yeah. at that time. Uh, so he cut himself with the idea of postponing the game because it was too crazy. Yeah, or he was like, oh, yeah. Get, get it behind so closed doors they or whatever. they caught him, and that meant that Chile was not even, not only did he not make it to the World Cup, to the World Cup, they were punished for the 1994 World Cup. Yeah. It wasn't even, couldn't even go to the qualifiers because yeah, of that. that. that so a, that reminds me a little bit of that so happened. You're a, a skeptic of this, this situation. with Because it was a celebration by Guardado, right? Guardado, at the, at, there was a big... Uh, after you know, threw, the, the game continued, the, water up on the game continued, right? Yeah. The following day with no people. Yeah, and Sergio then, Canales scores the winner for Betis. So Betis do advance. Yeah, and the do Copa advance Rey. in Copa del Rey against their... Bitter rivals. Bitter yeah. rival. And then Guardado does that with a bottle... He mimic the situation that happened with Jones, and so yeah. How that, that's my question. When I saw that, how bad was he hit? You know, that's my question. He, he didn't appear to be that injured, so I think it was probably a little bit of you know gamesmanship. So and, I but, think we need to do a test here, David. We need you to stand over there. We're gonna throw a metal pole a, at, well, at your head and just no, see it how just, you. Because Bond. it's when I saw it, I saw it because I was watching it uh, the replay, the replay, and the guys keep talking about the goal. Uh, they keep talking about the beautiful goal, right? The Olimpico, which yeah, is that was a great we forgot goal. about talking about Fakir's that doing that really, un golazo Olimpico, yeah, you know, from the corner. Yeah, that was beautiful. Goal. Beautiful. We're talking about that, and then I see the guys start talking about, and then you see the flag flying. Yeah. You see it, and then, come, it, it, like when he hit the guy. It seems like he he exaggerated, he exaggerated yeah, he, he, he uh, was right away. Shocked by, by yeah, the but yeah. I think he was excited. So that's what I'm thinking, and it reminded me of that Condor Rojas situation. I, I was talking to you well, because he was, was uh, exaggerating a little bit. Well, I, that's what I think. this was not as bad as in 2007 during this, this uh, uh, Real Betis Sevilla <laughs> match when Sevilla manager Juan de Ramos. Was hit with the frozen water frozen bottle, bottle, bottle. Yeah. yeah, which knocked him unconscious. Yeah. Very serious stuff. So this is not as bad as that. Fortunately, we don't want to. See. This is but, awful. So, so don't throw stuff. But definitely, yeah, but, that, but still, yeah. I mean, I mean, I mean, it, you I don't mean, want to. This stadium was going crazy, man. That yeah, that, it, was, I, it was. It was getting a little bit out of control. Yeah, and so, so I think know, it was a good decision to postpone it because. Uh, yeah, you, you, uh, you don't, don't understand how people. much these people hate each other. It's an intense rivalry. Very, very. Intense rivalry. And what a way to conclude our inaugural Football in Vivo Club Deportes edition here with a Real Betis update. You got to love it. That, that's the that's only right. way to do it. Okay, we are on clubdeportes.com on YouTube. We're going to be airing on Monday evenings. Uh, you can follow us on Football Austin on Twitter. That's F U T B O L Austin on Twitter. Thanks, you guys. We'll do it again next week. Football in Vivo. Hey. Yes, sir. We'll be here. Vamos, Club Deportes. <laughs>